Today I'm going to be talking about my camera settings for the DJI Mavic Pro and color grading. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm getting all my stuff together, getting ready to leave. My office is a big mess right now, but let me just show you guys. I have this little shelf desk type thing where I keep all of my stuff where I store it all. So I have my drone battery chargers in here. I have my controller in here. So whenever I come home, I go ahead and drop everything in there. And then when I'm ready to go, I grab it out, pack it in my um, DJI Mavic Pro bag. Well, I got everything together. I'm in the car. I'm headed to the shoot location. So it's like a maybe 35 minute drive headed there and then we'll get out, get set up and get some footage. So I'm going to do a couple of flights here. It is almost one o'clock p.m. So that means that the sun is like right straight overhead. It's not a very cloudy day, so it's bright, bright sunlight. Uh, what that means is if I don't have my ND filter attached to the drone, the footage is going to be really washed out. It's really windy. Hopefully that's not too windy sounding. Uh, so quickly I wanted to go over the settings that I use on my DJI Mavic Pro. So we want to go to EXP and on the rudder setting we want to make sure that that is set to 0.2. It um, could even be probably a little bit less. Uh, 0.15 is probably okay. Anyway, so we'll set that. The yaw endpoint here just adjusts the sensitivity of how quickly it turns. So I like to set that to 50%. Uh, this is all in favor of getting a smoother, slower turn. So you don't have quick jerky turns. And then we want to go to the gimbal speed. Camera advanced. All right, so we want to set the gimbal speed to 20 or less. Right now it's set to 18, which is pretty good. We could even probably slow it down a little bit less than that. Um, the tilt limit, I like to turn on the 30% up extensible. It just gives you a little bit more variety, a little bit more flexibility for how high you can go with the gimbal. Synchronous follow, um, I turn on, which I think is on by default. And that's it for gimbal settings. Uh, now the other settings would be the color and shutter settings and that kind of thing. So what I like to do with the shutter setting is set the shutter to about double the FPS that's kind of the recommended so I set that to 60 since I'm shooting at 30 30 30 uh, frames per second and then in the video menu I always set the video size to 4k which is the 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second and that gives me the, a high quality image but still fast enough frames per second to not look too jerky on turns and then US standard is typically NTSC video format, MP4. If you're using a Mac to edit, MOV might be your preferred setting. White balance, I usually set to a custom setting. If you don't do that, what tends to happen is that it will try to adjust mid-flight. So if you're flying toward the sun, 
you have a different color profile than if you're flying away from the sun and it's really hard to color balance. So what I try to do is keep it between about 5500K and 6500K and you can kind of adjust it to see what looks best, but I like a custom white balance. And then style, I have custom and I just set everything to negative one. That seems to work well for me. Um, and in color, I just recently started using D-Log for the color. It preserves the most amount of color data while keeping a very consistent look and feel and it's meant to be used for post-processing. If you're doing color correction post-processing, D-Log is a nice way of keeping it consistent so that it's easier to edit color profile later. So that's pretty much it for my color settings and my camera settings. Really important is if you're going to shoot with this low of a shutter speed in sunlight, you will want to make sure you have an ND filter on because otherwise it'll just look really washed out. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Part two, I'll get into the color grading aspect of it.